2021, Beva has summarized its strategy as sustainable solutions for life. So please tell us how this strategy builds on previous iterations of your strategy and what the long-term performance goals relating to this strategy are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Sustainability is uh, uh, becoming more important, not only for our company, but for all companies and all industries, I guess. And uh, Baiva, in, in a very early stage, uh, took the advantage of the sustainability to build it up in its, in its uh, own company. Um, we have already been, uh, it has already been supported uh, in, in many ways of our financing system, and I will probably come back to this later. But uh, it's another iteration, as I said, of our strategy that we implemented in 2008 when we started to change the company from a pure trading company, uh, as we always say, kicking boxes from, from left to right, uh, into a solution provider. And finally, the, the word solution came into the strategy, and now it has been adopted by sustainable solutions for life. We are supporting people in their basic needs. It's about food, it's about energy, it's about mobility, it's about living. So these are uh, mostly base, basic needs uh, of living. And this is where we're supporting uh, people in. And what we would now do uh, further to look on sustainability issues in this uh, value chain that we will build up and build up uh, for the for the next generation so to to bring brighter the green and sustainable image of our company uh, uh, in the scene or on the scene thank you and the most obvious aspect of the group's commitment to sustainability is the growth of the renewable energy business so please tell us how this key business segment has evolved yeah, that was a very simple story in the beginning, honestly. Coming back from our agribusiness and also from building materials, we were already involved uh, in a very early stage on renewable energy business. Because in fact, it was uh, selling biogas facilities uh, to our farmers or in the building material sector, selling photovoltaic modules uh, via the building materials segment to all group of customers. But in fact, it has not been very professional in the beginning. And in 2008, 2009, with the, in these days, new CEO, Professor Klaus Lutz coming in, we looked on the value chain that we have on our group and we thought renewable energy, we, we were already in the, in the classical conventional energy, but renewable energy has also something to do with farmers, with farming, environment, whatever, name it. So we thought this could be a chance to build it up. And it was really in these days, a very early stage. We just started with uh, a company that we acquired in the southwest of Germany, in Tübingen. Um, that was a solar module trading company, uh, followed by another company, the former Renerco AG uh, company uh, owned by Babcock Brown. They were doing project development, a very low level in these days. And we combined these businesses um, and finally we built it up to what it is today, a company with more than two and a half billion on turnover. And yeah, the largest profit contributor uh, of the group uh, in these days. And you mentioned before uh, from, from the sustainability aspect, what should, would be the, the, the performance outcome uh, in the future. I guess from the today's or on 2020's uh, profit level of some 215 million overall, we will put it up to 400 to 450 million for the whole group within the next couple of years until 2025. And the largest part, the biggest part of the profit contribution will come out of the renewable energy sector by mostly half of it or even more. Thank you very much. And next question, EIP took a 49% stake in that renewable energy business in March 2021, um, putting in an equity contribution of 
530 million euros. So please, can you tell us a little bit about the rationale for that investment? Thank you. Yeah, you know, it was uh, very crucial even for, for us from the finance department, for me as a CFO, uh, how could we further support the growth of renewable energy. Renewable energy is growing year by year. And if you see it coming up from 2009 until uh, this year or last year, it has been an, an, an ongoing success story, but also a growth story. And that need, means we need resources. We need financial resources to back this business, to make it even more stable for the future and to allow them to grow the business uh, globally. So for me, it was very clear, and for us, it was very clear that it could not be only done by our, by our own resources within uh, Biva AG. We need a strong partner. So we looked at uh, the opportunities. We thought about, should we go public? Uh, I think the idea in these days was just a developing company that is not, would not fit uh, for the public market via an IPO. So the, the, the other idea was, uh, could we find an infrastructure partner, not a uh, private equity partner, but an infrastructure partner who is willing uh, to go away uh, on this path with us a couple of years to further uh, develop uh, the renewable energy sector, the renewable energy uh, business. And this is what we found with uh, EIP in Zurich, uh, formerly completely owned, I guess, by Credit Suisse, still Credit Suisse is in there. So we went with, the in, uh, went, uh, with them into the uh, uh, initial uh, valuations. And finally, what, as you said, mentioned, they took a minority shareholding of 49%, uh, uh, offering 400 and, uh, 530 million euro. This is not something that we sold from Biva AG. It's not a share sale. It's a, a capital increase within Biva RE. So this money went completely into Biva RE, supporting them to further develop uh, their, their projects. And this is the crucial one, to build up an own IPP portfolio within Biva RE, which allows them uh, to create uh, more sustainable uh, flows uh, of income uh, in the future. The interesting aspect on the whole entrance of ERP is that the valuation, if you take it up to 100%, and remember they only took a minority stake, but the, the initial valuation out of these transactions sums up to something uh, above 1.1 billion euro for the whole renewable energy entity. So remember that the whole market cap of Biva AG on the stock uh, uh, exchange in, in Frankfurt, for example, is only 1.3 million a billion, 1.3 billion in total. So that means the intrinsic value of the renewable energy business is not completely reflected in uh, the market cap that we have uh, uh, until today. That's a very good point. Thank you. And uh, in June 2019. Baver issued its first green bond, which was for 500 million. Can you tell us what that financing was used for? Yeah, it was uh, an interesting transaction, also a very early one in these days on green bonds. Today, green bonds and green financing is, uh, is, 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 is a common thing, but in these days it was quite unusual and it was uh, the first green bond of an unrated company uh, in Europe with uh, in, in, in that size of uh, uh, 500 million. This money went completely into the RE business as well. It, the, the bond has been issued by the mother company, by AG, and was prior to the EIP transaction with our uh, friends in Zurich. This money went completely into uh, the RE business, supporting them uh, to do what they are doing, uh, developing their projects, uh, and uh, building up the uh, uh, solar trade uh, business as well. So this is completely dedicated to RE business. Uh, and it was issued, as I mentioned, in 2019. It goes up for five years until 2024. 
And as we are already in 2022, we have to consider uh, what we are doing next uh, on this bond. But the, the unusualness of these transactions was that it was the first unrated uh, company that issued a green bond uh, in a size of 500 million in these days. Thank you. It's pretty impressive. And uh, you followed that uh, in September 2021 um, with an ESG-linked syndicated financing agreement for 1.7 billion euros. So tell us a bit about the significance of that financing. Yeah, that was uh, another step. And you see how uh, sustainable finance uh, is, a, is a supporting uh, by uh, financing structure and uh, financing activities. Uh, that was the next step and it was a kind of change and paradigm uh, on financing within BIVA. Uh, that was the first time, or it was, you might also say, the, globe, the closure uh, of the tra transforming uh, BIVA's financing activities from pure short-term financing as it is used uh, with being a trading companies in the good old days into a long-term uh, related financing structure with the uh, financing uh, parts of five, seven, and 10 years. So that was the, the first step that we, that we, what we, what we changed, uh, the first thing that we changed on the financing structure, changing from the short-term into long-term financing. And it was the first time that we created a SIN loan, a syndicated loan with 10 bank partners uh, around Germany, mostly around Germany. In the lead were the Unicredit, the uh, ZZ Bank in Frankfurt and the LBBW, Landesbank Baden-Württemberg in Stuttgart. And these uh, three, they lead the consortium, they lead the consortium of the, of the financing structure, putting up this 1.7 uh, billion in total, replacing all short-term bilateral uh, financing uh, facilities. So that was uh, the, the structural part of the transaction and the other part, as you mentioned, the ESG linked. This is where we benefited from the sustainable financing uh, discussions. Uh, uh, we issue, issued it with a ESG link. That means that it's combined or it's uh, related uh, to our MICI rating that we have already with a very good double A MSCI rating uh, for BIVA. That proves from the external view of a rating, rating agency um, how sustainable uh, BIVA and in particular, of course, the renewable energy activities uh, are. And it proves me, uh, it proves to me that um, these ESG, ESG ratings, the green ratings, the sustainable, sustainable, sustainability ratings, to name it this way, are getting more important, maybe even more important than the uh, common financial ratings that we always saw over the last decades. And I think this will be an ongoing thing. Sustainability ratings will, will be becoming more important uh, in the future and therefore the link uh, on the financial financing transaction with this ESG uh, SIN loan is that we get better conditions if we improve on the MSCI rating. There's not a lot of uh, uh, air to improve from a double <laughs> B can only go to a one uh, A, uh, B, uh, uh, sorry, double A, you can only go to a single A uh, rating, but um, uh, if, we, if we get down, then we have a little bit downgrading on it, uh, but we, we are not considering to getting down. It's more uh, that we want to improve it. Right, thank you. Um, and finally, in December, the group announced that it had arranged an ESG-linked bonded loan of 350 million. So can you tell us about the implications of that as well? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, again, in, in sustainable finance linked uh, financing transaction, ESG linked transaction, uh, the third one, the green bond, the SIN loan, and finally, uh, in, in, uh, at the end of the year, the, the uh, uh, bonded loan. Uh, the bonded loan was considered to be in a volume of 250 million. Uh, we had been uh, oversized, so we took 315 50 million uh, in total, 
That's the same thing as it is uh, with the SIN loan. It's also linked to the MSCI rating that we already have. But uh, other than the SIN loan, which is the syndicated financing of uh, dedicated 10 banks, this is now being offered to um, mostly all investors, a uh, couple of investors coming from the cooperative network here in Germany, but also from abroad. Um, and it shows how huge the demand is on sustainable financing transaction if you are really a green or a sustainable a company, then it should be easier. And for me, as a sometimes people discuss um, these sustainable finance regulations, the taxonomy regulations that are coming up as a burden for for everyone, for the industries, and uh, uh, as a, as I I'll, I better take it as a challenge because it uh, offers huge opportunities to those companies who are doing this business as they are considered to be sustainable. Um, if you go into this direction, you will benefit from uh, the regulation you have all you, you, you have to follow uh, in, in any way, mm -hmm. but uh, take it positive and then and, and make the best out of it. And if you could do that, uh, you and your company will, will benefit out of that. So mm -hmm. this is what we did finally with this last transaction uh, of, the, of the bonded loan. That was an add-on that we plan to do um, at that uh, um, um, complement uh, or, or completed, not complement, but completed uh, the uh, financial uh, transactions of 2021. And so what proportion of your financing is green financing nowadays? Where does that oh, that's, really, that's really a good question. If I sum it all up, the 1.7, the 500 uh, and the 350, I would say at least, I, it's, it's a guess, I would say 75% of the whole volume that we have on financial transaction volume wise uh, is a meanwhile ESG or sustainable whatever linked. Right. Yeah, so a virtuous circle really, because you're getting investment, you produce more wind and solar farms and uh, rating should go up. So yeah. excellent, really. Hopefully. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Perfect. Thank you for having us and uh, all the best for you.